Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is part one of our two-part series on Little Nav Map. Coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. Part one of this series is going to be focused on new users of Little Nav Map. We're going to go over the download, installation, and the setup of Little Nav Map to get you ready to start generating flight plans. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. All the links for this video will also be down in the description. If you enjoy the video, consider hitting that subscribe button, ticking that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So the first thing you need to do is click on the link down in the description and it'll bring you up on this page. Then we need to download the little nav map application. So we're going to head up to the releases and downloads. And once you're here, you're going to download the latest version of little nav map. You're also going to make sure that you download the correct version for your operating system. I'm using windows. So we're going to hit the windows. The download should appear in your web browser. We're just going to allow that to finish and then I'll bring you guys right back. While we're waiting on that to download, there's one other thing that we need to download from this website. So we just need to go back to the main page. So we'll hit the back button. From our main page, go right up to where it says Alex's project. Click on that. Once you're on this page, head all the way down to where it says downloads. We're going to click on that. Here's where we're going to be able to download all the different aircraft performance information so that little nav map can accurately calculate our fuel. So to get there, we're going to head up to aircraft performance. Click on that. And then you're going to select your simulator. So we're using Microsoft Flight Sim. Once you're here, download whatever aircraft performance information that you're going to be using to flight plan in Little Nav Map. For demonstration purposes, I'll just download the Cessna 152. So once you have gone through and downloaded all the different aircraft performance information, we need to make a folder to put on your desktop so that we can put all of these in. So we're going to go to the desktop, right click, and then click New, select Folder. And then you can just name it aircraft performance. Now that we have that folder on your desktop, you can take all of the aircraft performance data and input it right into that folder. So we're just going to drag it, drop it there. And if I open that folder now, you can see the Cessna 152 is in there. So you should have all of your other aircraft in there as well at this point. Now we can move on with the little nav map installation. We're going to left click on the zip file for little nav map that should open up the extraction program. And then we're just going to hit the extract all. Now you can set the destination location for your desktop. I'm just going to leave it in my downloads Hit extract. Now you can see I have the little nav map folder in my download section. So I'm just going to drag and drop this, put it right on my desktop. This way it'll make it a little bit easier for us. Another good tip is to double click on little nav map, click on the folder. And if you go down to the application, you can left click the highlight, right click, and then we can create a shortcut. That shortcut we can then drag and drop right on our desktop. This way we don't have to keep going through the folders all the time. And then we can just click on the shortcut. Before we exit out of our browser, there is one more thing that we need to download here. So we're just going to hit the back button. And we're going to hit back one more time. The section that we want to go to here is globe elevation data. So we're going to left click on that. And then here is going to download all of the elevation data for the entire globe. So we're just going to left click that. Once that finishes, unzip that file and place that on your desktop. Once you have done that, we no longer need the web browser open. So we're going to go ahead and close that out now. At this point, we should have three different folders on your desktop and a shortcut if you decided to do that. Now we can open little nav map so we can start configuring the application so we can set it up for how we like it. If you do get this little message, just click on more info, run anyway, and then it will start little nav map for us. On the first time opening the application, yours is not going to look exactly like this. We'll go over how to set all this up in just a few minutes. But first, we need to do some critical things to make sure that all of the scenery, airports, and elevation data is properly input into Little Nav Map. 
So the first thing we need to do is to head up to the Scenery Library tab, and then we're going to go down to Load Scenery Library. Here we're going to select the simulator that we're going to be using. For me, it's Microsoft Flight Sim. And then we're going to hit the Load button. What this is going to do now is go through Microsoft Flight Simulator and gather all of the data from the VORs, ILSs, NDBs, markers, waypoints, and airspaces so that you have all that information on little nav maps and it's all going to be correct to what you have in the sim. Now this may take a couple minutes, five or ten minutes, but just allow that to finish. Once it does, I'll bring you guys back and we'll move on to the next step of the process. All right, so that is finished. You just want to go ahead and hit the OK button. I also forgot to mention, if it's your first time opening this application, you may also get a warning to say that you need to update your elevation data. So that's what we're going to do right now. So you want to go up to the Tools tab, and then we're going to head down to the Options tab. From here, you're going to navigate down to Cache and Files. And then over here on the right hand side is where we're going to be able to select the file location for our elevation data that you had just downloaded. We're going to make sure that you tick the Use Offline Globe Elevation Data, and then you're going to click the Select Globe Directory. You'll select the directory on your desktop. You won't really see anything in it here. And then we're going to click Select Folder. Once you have done that, make sure you go down, hit Apply, and we are all set with the elevation data. Now there's a couple other things that I would like to go over while we're in the Options tab. One of the biggest ones would be the units. Here you can set your units for your part of the world. Once you get that finished, then we're going to head down to the Weather tab. Here we can select what weather we want to display in little nav maps. So if you're using VATSIM, make sure you tick on VATSIM, IVAO. Once you get that done, make sure that you hit the Apply button at the bottom. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is the online flying. This will also be able to show us any aircraft that are flying on other networks. So if you're flying on VATSIM, you can tick VATSIM and see the other VATSIM pilots that are flying around you. I think that is pretty cool. And then you can go through all the other options here. It's pretty much just a way to customize all the different colors and other things on little nav map. So we're going to hit OK, finish up with that. Now, the next thing I know a lot of people want to know is how do we get the dark theme on Little Nav Map? To do that, we're going to head up to the Window tab, and then you're going to go down and select Style. Here, we're going to select the Night Style, and that will bring you up with the darker version of Little Nav Map. Once we're at this point, there's a couple other bits of information that we can have populate on our screen for us. Below the top toolbar, we have a couple other icons here, and if we start clicking on these, you'll see some dialog boxes start to open up. Oops. Now once you get everything populated on your screen, you are able to move these things around if you don't like the location. So the elevation data, if I don't want it there, I can move it over here on the side. You can also adjust the size of each of these panels as well. If you don't like how much screen they're taking up, you can adjust that. Another thing to note, once all of these information panels are now displayed, we can choose which tabs we want to be displayed in those panels. To do that, if you head over to the right of any of the panels, except for the elevation data at the bottom, you'll see a little drop down here. Here's where we're able to choose what tabs we want to display at the top of each panel. So now that you know that, go through each of these information panels and just select which items that you may want and may not want to be displaying. Because the more things that you're going to display, the more cluttered it is going to get, and then you've got to use these little side buttons here to uh, navigate through them all. And it can get a little confusing if you've got a lot of things or a lot of tabs open. Let's go ahead and take a look at the icons at the top of the screen here. So we have a plus and a minus. This is going to either increase the amount of detail that you're going to see on the map, or decrease the amount of detail. And as you can see, the more detail you add, the more cluttered it gets on your screen to make it pretty difficult to see what's going on there. To the right of that is the different airfields that we can display in Little Nav Map. So here we can force, and I do recommend to turn this on to show any add-on airports that you may have. Then this is gonna show all of the airports with hard runways on the map. 
This is going to be for all your grass runways. I usually keep that off unless I'm going to be flying bush missions. Then I'll keep that on. To the right of that shows any empty airports. I'm not too sure what that is, so I just keep it on. And then we have our nav aids to the right of that. So we have our VORs, NDBs, waypoints, and the ILSs. To the right of that, we can also display all the different airways that are available, either the Victor Airways or the Jet Airways. Now, one thing that you may have an issue with, if you click on either of these airways to display them, and you don't see them populate on your screen, well, that's because we don't have the definition turned up high enough for what we're going to be displaying. So we need to go back up to the top and click on the plus icon. And when you do, it'll add that next layer of definition to your map and all the different airways will then appear. But as you can see, it can get pretty confusing once all this is displayed on your screen here. Next to the airway icons, we have a couple more options. So we have the range finder. This will allow us to either put range rings or we can measure specific lines between different locations or two different waypoints. Next to that, we also have a couple options for our aircraft that will be displayed on the map. We can have a trail behind the aircraft. We can turn the aircraft on and off. We can show missed approach legs on the map and we can turn on and off the flight plan on the map as well. Over here on the right, I think this is another really neat feature is we can display the wind forecast altitude levels. So if you click on that, you can select which altitude you would like to display and it will give us all the wind information at that time. And that's pretty cool. So now let's hop down to the second row of icons below that. Over here to the left, this is where we're going to be able to create a flight plan. We also have the magic wizard flight plan that'll create one for us. We'll get into that in part two of the video. These are going to turn on and off all the data panels that we have just set up on your screen. But to the right of that, here's where we can actually hide or show the different airspaces on our map. So if we turn that off, you can see all the different airspaces that are around the different airports just went away. To the right of that, we can actually choose what class of airfields we want to display on our map as well. To the right of that, I believe this is military stuff. But let me know down below in the comments what this stands for, because I'm not too sure. To the right of that, we can also turn on any restricted areas, uh, prohibited areas, things like that, glider prohibited. So we can check on all of those as well. If you don't want any of these to show up, just select none, and then it will remove all of those off your display. To the right of those icons, we can also choose what type of map we want to display on our screen here. So you can go through each of these and pick which one you like. One of the other issues that you may experience on your display is that you may get some tiling errors. I did a video on this before. I'll post down below in the description. I would tell you what it is, but I really can't remember what I had to do to get those tile errors off. I know you can change the map here to a different map and that'll remove any of the tiling errors. There is another way to do it. And again, I just can't remember. So if you want to know, check that video down in the description. Next to your map selections, we have three more icons. So we can either connect or disconnect from the simulator. We can also load our scenery library right from here. Lastly, we have the settings cog, and this will open up the options menu that we adjusted when we first started the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to finish us up for today. We'll go through all the different options on the information panels when we go through the flight planning in episode number two. If you have any comments or questions for today's video, post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If the video helps you out, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody. If you want to see part two of the video, click up here if it's available. Thanks for watching.